أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين اللهم يسر ولا تعسر رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآل محمد وارحم محمد وآل محمد وبارك على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إلا إذا تعلم من النجوم قدر ما يعرف به القبلة وأوقات الصلاة فيجوز ذلك In our previous discussion we spoke about uh, علم النجوم the, uh, the knowledge that people seek um, the, uh, what do you call it uh, النجوم, the stars علم النجوم, the knowledge of the stars which is, uh, what do you call it uh, um, those that they do to say you, you got astronomy so the, the علم النجوم uh, the knowledge of the astronomy it is not good for a person to seek that knowledge looking at somebody's sickness and say whether we let's see whether you're gonna get better or not but if it comes to seeking the knowledge قدر ما يعرف به القبلة just to know the Qibla because we use the astronomy to be able to know the direction if you learn the ilm nujum for Qibla then there's no problem or to know the uh, prayer time awkati salam awkati salam so normally you'll be able to know when the sun rise when the sun set you'll be so those there's no problem with that for you that is acceptable wa amma wa amma ta'limu al-ilm aw ta'allamu al-ilm al-tib فيجوز لأنه سبب من أسباب من الأسباب. but to seek the knowledge of طب which is medicine to seek medicine it can be from all angle whether it's western medicine local medicine dealing with stars to be able to know if I use this tree or this leaf or this root it will cure this disease or that disease there's nothing wrong with that because the Islamically there's nothing wrong with okay to seek for medication there's nothing like uh, if you go for medication, you don't believe in Allah. That is no, that's not that's not Islam. Okay? فَيَجُوزُ That is acceptable. تَعَلِّمُهُ كَسَائِرِ الْأَسْبَابِ Like any other asbab. فَكَدْ تَدَاوَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Because the Prophet ﷺ, he did medicine. Even we have a book called Tibbu nabawi That has compilation of a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Eat this food. It's good for you for this avoid this food because it's gonna harm you or no this tree is this plant is good the Prophet ﷺ did medicine so this uh, he could have said why would you believe in Allah why do you have to take you know he tell us use uh, honey use this it's good so the Prophet ﷺ did medicine there's nothing wrong with knowing medication or knowing ways in which some sickness can be cured that does not mean that you don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we need to be mindful of that فَكَتَ دَاوَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ As the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم himself did medicine وَكَدْ هَكَا عَنِ الشَّافِعِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى As Imam al-Shafi has narrated this in different places أَنَّهُ قَالْ That he said عَلَى إِلْمُ إِلْمَانِ So Imam al-Shafi He described knowledge to be into two عَلَى إِلْمُ إِلْمَانِ Knowledge is considered into two عِلْمُ الْفِكْحِ لِلْأَدْيَانِ to seek the knowledge of jurisprudence for your deen. Okay? To seek the knowledge of jurisprudence for your deen. And seek the knowledge of medicine for your body. Yeah. So here is telling us that uh, he, Imam Shafi, what he thought when it comes to knowledge is only into two. He does not have any concern about any other field. He said, knowledge is considered into two. Ilm al-fiqh, to seek the knowledge of jurisprudence. Lil adyan, so that you can better yourself with your deen, knowing what is accepted, what is not, what is halal, what is haram, what, what if you do is going to get you closer to Allah, what if you do is going to take you far from Allah. So he said that, that is very important. As a knowledge, one need to seek. 
and then ilm al lil abdan and also the second knowledge that Imam al-Shafi'i considered to be important knowledge is the knowledge of medicine lil abdan for the body okay so in among for him wa ma wara adhalika bulagat al any knowledge that comes after jurisprudence and medicine is just for world living that's how he sees it and of course if you are to sit down and analyze that's exactly true because you need a healthy person to be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in a famous hadith um, a believer al-mu'min al-qawi okay ahabbu ila Allah min al-mu'min al-da'if a believer that is strong is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than a believer that is weak so you need to be healthy which means that being healthy what to be able to get medication that will help you to be healthy that part he consider is very important because it keeps the body healthy while ilm al-fiqh and also having the jurisprudence knowing what is accepted and what is not islam is not a religion that you just do with ilm al-ras what you think just look at wiping of the, the socks if you are to go by your own listen mentality you will say that look it's good to wipe underneath because that is where you step on the floor but islam is not ideological religion it has system okay so it's a wipe on top so the same thing if you don't know or you don't have the knowledge of jurisprudence how can you try to work on this and analyze things of that nature so imam shafi with that he decided any other knowledge apart from these two he sees it as just a worldly thing he didn't say it's haram he's just saying that he is looking at when it comes to knowledge these are most important thing. that's just that as we spoke about there are things that we seek knowledge for because we need them every single day that is our affairs and we have things that we don't need until when we the, 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 the need arise like the sickness so those are the things that we need to look at but now وَأَمَّا تَفْسِيرُ الْإِلْمِ فَهُوَ صِفَةٌ يَتَجَلَّى بِهَا لِمَنْ قَامَتْ بِهِ أو لِمَنْ قَامَتْ هِيَ بِهِ الْمَذْكُورَةِ أَمَّا التَّفْسِيرُ الْإِلْمِ but when it comes to the tafsir the meaning the explanation what is considered as knowledge by itself what is considered as knowledge for who was sifatun yatajalla ay for who was sifatun yatadaha wa yankashif al inkishaf at tama huwa sifatun yatajalla that is the description that explains that open that explains or describes what knowledge is all about liman qamat for whoever stood for it or mentioned it as we made mention in our discussion or anyone that is associated with knowledge you will see some sort of information or you see some sort of appearance and you see some sort of actions with that person which means that knowledge is not how much you memorize from the book knowledge is not about the certificate you are holding knowledge come back to the action that you use the knowledge for if you have the knowledge you memorize quran mashallah tabarakallah but you are a liar you gossip you backbite you cheat you insult people you accuse people you fight with people where is the benefit of the knowledge of the memorization of the quran so then you will fall among the people the prophet sallallahu said rubba qari il quran yaqra'un al quran wal quran yal'anu most people they read the quran and the quran is cursing them because you've got the information here you are it's in your hands but you keep disobeying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember one of our hadith he said the quran is imma hujjatan laka aw alayka on the day of qiyamah is either the quran become an evidence for you or against you so what is the benefit of the knowledge if you don't utilize it so it call comes down to the utilization of the knowledge well fiqhu ma'rifatu daqa'iq al-ilmi ma'a naw'u ilaj fiqhu the knowledge of jurisprudence ma'rifatu it gives you the understanding it gives you the reality of what knowledge is all about as abu hanifa made mention so knowledge by itself when we talk about ilm al-fiqh as abu hanifa said the most important thing is when you're talking about knowledge is something that will teach you the reality of what you need to know to understand your creator and how to associate yourself when and also take the teachings 
of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet and know how to more or less do what Allah wants you to do and avoid what Allah said don't do. That is the reality of the knowledge of jurisprudence. Okay? Ma'ana wa ilaj with other other information that we can seek in terms of getting a, becoming better people in the societies in which we live. Qala Abu Hanifa rahimahullah wa rahmatullah alayhi. Abu Hanifa said, al fiqhu ma'rifat al nafs. The knowledge of jurisprudence, ma'rifat al nafs, is something that tells you or teaches you who you are, your origin. You know, when we talk about a nafs, nafs, it, can, it comes in language to represent the heart. A nafs comes in sentence to represent the soul. So as much as we talk about nafs, it's a general thing like Ismul Jins. It's a general name, okay? But when we look at knowing the reality of a person, knowing the reality of your creation, why did Allah create you? وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We've not created human and jinn except for them to worship us, isn't it? Now, look at that human. Human is a combination of two things. Number one, the soul and with and what? And the body. What is the body made of? The body is made of what? Clay. When you talk about human, the soul and the body combine and then you see someone that you respect and is important. The moment these two are separated, the other part that you cannot see is the soul. That is the nafs. The other part that you are used to, that is the body. The moment the nafs goes out of it, you don't like it anymore. You can see from calling the name of that person, the moment the soul goes, you start calling the dead body. The name already started vanishing. Okay? That tells you, this one that we decorate, we put whatever clothing on, is not as important as the one inside it. You will be wearing the same clothing. We cheer you up. The moment you die, we don't see any good about you but to bury you. Is it? That tells us that this body, we shouldn't spend much time on it. We can go to Turkey and get new teeth, but that shouldn't mean that that should be the amen essence, isn't it? We should go beyond that, which is what? We should look at the soul, the nafs. The nafs is the reality. The nafs is the reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell us how important is this nafs. He said, when he created Adam alayhi salam, فَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِرُوهِ And I blew life in Adam from my own. Now, this is one secret about human nature. This understanding made the Christian say that Allah created human in his own form. But it's not this Basharia. Basharia has a starting. Adam alayhi salam is the first person to have this body. That's why he's called Abu al-Bashar. Alright? So when Allah said, I blew life in Adam from my own life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look in Surah Al-Kahf. When the Quraysh came to the Jew in Medina, they wanted to elicit information about the prophet of the past so that they can go and, you know, debate with the prophet because they don't have any idea about the information from the heavens. But the Jew had, so they wanted to get information. The Jew gave them three questions. Go and ask Muhammad. If he knows these three, then he's a prophet. Number one, ask him about the people of the cave. Number two, ask him about Zulkarnain, Askandar. Number three, ask him about the soul. Allah answered all three questions in different ways. He answered about Zulkarnain, we saw that. He answered about the people of the cave, we saw that. When it came to the soul, he said, Ilimuha in the Allah. Tell them regarding the soul, only Allah knows the knowledge about it. What is this telling you still about this soul? Allah said, I blew life in Adam from my, my own soul. Number two, Allah said regarding the soul, check is the knowledge only Allah knows. Now, you come to yourself also, you look. You seen human, animals, whatever that has life in, they are moving around doing whatever. No one can ever tell you in the body, this is where the soul is located. Right? This is within you. You couldn't even identify where is my soul. Okay? So now, this is the catch here. Since you cannot see it, Allah said it's from him. Allah said he is the only one who knows this part. If you want to know the reality of this soul, connect it back to his creator. Connect it back to its origin. You are free in this world. You will never have troubles. That is what? To connect the heart. Let the heart be soft. Let it be connected. That the iman is what you need. 
because that is what is connecting that to its creator. Allah with the remembrance of Allah, the heart gets tranquility. Right? Jadidu, renew your iman. Jadidu imanikum bi qawli la ilaha illallah. Say la ilaha illallah always. It renews the iman. Hmm? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also continue to tell you regarding this. Because if you are able to fix this, if the nafs is clean, if the nafs, nafs is okay, you are okay. If the nafs is not okay, you are not okay. Okay? So for you to fix that, you need to always connect it back to its creator. So the, here Abu Anifa is trying to tell you that, look, you need to know the knowledge of nafs. Knowledge of nafs, it can go back to the heart. In the body, there is a flesh. If that flesh is clean, the whole body is clean. If that body is broken, spoiled, rotten, the whole body is broken. He said that is the heart. The Prophet ﷺ spoke about that. Sometimes the heart is called the, 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 the nafs because that is in charge of your affairs. Where your anger and happiness and everything is coming from is there. Okay? So he said that What is with the soul and what is against the soul. So if you are to talk about the knowledge of jurisprudence, it's a knowledge that helps you to understand what will help you to free your soul from any punishment or what will lead you to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma laha wa ma alayha. What is going to support you? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made people went to sleep and I got up. Someone slept the same time as me but couldn't get up. What happened? What did I did extraordinary that my life came back to me? This is to tell me there is an agenda, there is something important for me to do. Okay? And also, when it comes to that, the question is always ask yourself, what have I done? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, every person when you wake up in the morning, everybody that wakes up in the morning, that person is selling his soul. Is either you sell your soul against from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way by doing evil act and following your personal desire which will lead the soul to the punishment of Allah or you free your soul by accepting and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing what Allah wants you to do and then you are free all right so know what makes your life better and know what will be against you in front of Allah that is the knowledge of jurisprudence your prayer the prayer what does he do your fasting what does he do your zakat, what does it do? How to deal with your family? Where is it coming from? How to deal with the people in the community? Where is it coming from? These are the information that when you know it properly, you are obeying Allah in your prayer, you are obeying Allah in your salat, you are obeying Allah in your fasting, you deal with people with respect and dignity because they are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You stay away from troubles. By doing this, you cannot do it just naturally. You need to have knowledge about how do I deal with this person? This is my wife. What are her rights on, on, on me? This is my child. What is his right on me? This is my mom. What is her right on me? This is my workplace. What is the right? I cannot take a dollar from the workplace and I did not work for it. No. A Muslim will not do that. We saw scholars that Allah has given knowledge out of fear of Allah. Even if they take a day or two days holidays, when they come back, they tell the accounts, take this much out of my pay. I was not in the work. Oh, it doesn't matter. They say, no, we don't want any extra. We want to take exactly what we work for. And then you see a Muslim who is at the workplace doing nothing but want to claim over time. The hours that he even paid, he did not do up to that hours but want to claim over time. You can understand this person don't know because every cent you spend, you're going to pay for that. A person Allah has given health strong person can go out and work and earn his own halal he wants to go under center link and you ask and this person is saying i'm a muslim you get the point i saw someone who was saying that people were trying to gather their kids and claim something money from center link to go to hajj how do you justify that like how as a muslim you don't want to make sure that you go by your halal when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying whoever 
does not care any money they want to earn, Allah will not care which door of Jahannam to put them in. If you don't care what you spend on you, the people of the past, a man will come out going to work, his wife will run behind him and say, please, when you go there, if you don't get it, come home. We will, be, we will, be, we will have patience to go without food. Don't go and bring non halal to us because we don't have patience to go through Allah's punishment. These are the wise and pious women of the past. This time, women don't care. It's the money that they care about, nothing else. If you're going to steal, whatever you're going to do, as long as the money will be there, you are the best person. You follow your halal, you get a little bit, they will insult you, they will curse you, they will compare you with anybody in the community. You are useless, you are that just because of money. Then it's up to you to look at, do you want her to praise you and Allah punish you in Jahannam? Or you will prefer she does whatever, but between you and Allah you are free. You choose. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah ta'ala tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure and clean, will not take anything that is impure. He went further to describe a man who is considered to be pious, obedience to Allah, worshipping Allah, but he uses things that are not halal in his life. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ya muddu ya dehi ila sama. He raised his hand up, making dua. Fa'anna yustajabala. How can Allah answer your dua when you are spending non-halal money for your clothing, for your food, for whatever? So we need to be very careful. So what will help us with this? The knowledge of jurisprudence. Knowing what is halal, knowing what is haram. We don't want to go in anything that has doubts. It's not, oh, they said that it's halal. Who said? What are the evidence? Stay away if you are not sure. The Prophet ﷺ said, clearly, in al halala bayyinun wa inna al-haram bayyinun. Haram is halal, if open, haram is open, halal is open. But he said, Bainahuma, in between the halal and the haram, there are things that are not, you are not sure of, the gray area. He said, stay away from it. So if you are not sure, don't get into it. Don't put yourself into something you regret later. So always, let's learn to understand our barriers when it comes to the deen. Wallahu alam, subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta wa nastakfiruka wa natubu ilayk, subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.